Like, I don't have time to get arrested. Yeah. Like, especially falsely. Exactly. I would kill to get out of this. <laughs> Well, I'm Matt. And I'm Carter. And welcome to another episode of It's Kind of a Gray Area. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. And now listen, this time I want you guys to buckle up, tie your shoes, and we're going to go for a little hike here. Yeah. There's another one of those episodes where we get a suggestion from a fan and we love it. Yes. Before we move past it, I just want to recognize that you told people to both buckle up and put their shoes on. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little confused on if we're going for a ride or going for a walk. Yeah, that sounds about right. So today's uh, suggestion comes from Beneath... Dirigible? I'm not a good pronunciation or I think it's I think it's beneath dirigible. Dirigible? Dirigible? Beneath beneath, beneath, beneath dirigible. Hold on. Beneath dirigible. Beneath dirigible. Beneath dirigible. Of course. So, so beneath's uh, suggestion for today uh, was this. This was his story. He said, uh, I don't know uh, what kind of humor you guys like, uh, but he's a fan of dark humor. We are too. Mm -hmm. Welcome beneath. Yes. Uh, he well, said, if you've ever seen the show Psych, there's a hilarious episode where the two main characters, Sean and Gus, find Gus's boss dead in his office. Mm -hmm. Classic sitcom situation. I was just about to drink my water, and then I remembered that scene, and I could not take a sip. Oh, one more second. Yeah. Uh, so. We'll catch it on camera eventually. Yeah, yeah. One day we're going to do a spit take. Yeah. A real, a real spit take. A real one. Yeah. You got to earn it. Uh, so, uh, and then there's evidence in the office pointing to Gus being the murderer. Uh, so they try to clean up the crime scene to clear Gus's name, and they only make it worse. Yes. Of course they do. So the actual shade that Beneath is saying out of that example right. is, uh, is it wrong to tamper with evidence at a crime scene mm -hmm. if it implicates you as the guilty party or murderer incorrectly? Yes. All right, if you're innocent. Because clearly, if you are guilty, tamper with it. You already messed it up, man. I mean, you are already guilty. So do whatever you can to get out of it. I'd be surprised if you're questioning whether or not to tamper <laughs> with evidence if you've already committed the crime. It's like, I murdered this guy, but I don't know. I think wiping my fingerprints off. That's I just, where I draw the line. I feel like that's lying. I may kill people, but I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an honest murderer. I'll tell you all about it. I'm, I'm not going to hide anything. I, I will do harm to people, but I'll be honest about it. Yeah. So is that wrong? Right. Is it wrong to tamper uh, with evidence? To tamper with evidence if it implicates you. Let's say wrongfully implicates you. Wrongfully yes. implicates you right. at uh, a crime scene and the police aren't there, no one's there. Like this isn't a will I get caught? Is is it okay? You have like 6 hours to like Right. Is it okay? So I'm picturing this as kind of like in that scene from Psych. Yes. Where you're the first person to discover the body, yeah. basically. Yep. And let's assume this is a murder. I mean, this could be any crime scene. Let's just focus on murder. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's focus on murder. It could have been a white-collar crime if the guy was white and he was wearing a collar. But let's True. assume he wasn't. Right. So it wasn't a white-collar crime. Gotcha. So you find a dead body and it looks like you're guilty, but you know, because you are yourself, yes. that you did not commit the crime. And others are not yourself, so they don't know that you did not commit the crime. That's true. A yes. lot of people are not the same person. Mm -hmm. And that means that you could be wrongfully imprisoned or at least get dragged into this whole thing. And then you have, like get arrested and you have to wait for trial and hope that evidence comes out to prove that you weren't the murderer. And like, what if you just started a new job? Or like, you got plans next weekend. Like, I don't have time to get arrested. Yeah. Like, especially falsely. Exactly. I would kill to get out of this. <laughs> and that's, that. it's just a cyclical problem, I guess. Yep, it is quite cyclical. As long as you have that mindset. This has long been a fear of mine, by the way. Being falsely accused? Yes. I, I know, I actually know one of your biggest fears. Snakes. That's one of the other ones. Right. Uh, one of your biggest fears is if you're driving along the road and there's a construction yeah. team working and like one of them steps out and you accidentally kill that person or run over them, like... You were just driving, they stepped out, and now you're a murderer. I would not know how to handle that. And you have to pull over and stop then and sit there after having killed this guy and, like, all of his construction buddies are there. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it, I guess tangentially to that fear. Your words are so much bigger than mine. I don't even know if I just pronounced that correctly. Yes, tangentially. That one's a hard word for me to get out. So I just kind of, like, say it as fast as I can and hope no one asks me to, like, repeat it. Now, and just to let you guys know, tangentially means when you have to touch your skin softly after being out in the sun too long. That's you have to touch it, it tangentially. Oh, gosh. 
Yeah, I mean, it's always been another fear of mine that, like, I go somewhere, like, I'm checking into a hotel room, mm-hmm. and I open the door, and there's a maid there who's been stabbed to death on the bed. And you're the first person to find the body. It's your room. Like, I mean, you're obviously going to be a suspect. I think one of my first reactions would be like, oh, my gosh. I need a different room. <laughs> ah, that's a little... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm Oof. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know how I would react. That would be one of the thoughts, though. Gosh, man, yeah. I don't know what my immediate reaction to that would be. It would not be, oh my gosh, there's a dead body. The shock of that would be too much for that to ever be your initial reaction. Am I being punked? Right. Is that still a thing? So that's the setup. That's the situation. Now, is it wrong to tamper with the crime scene? Uh, And so what what was your thought on that? Because I I pose this. I try to get your answer first when I pose that question. I'm going to say it really depends on how the situation looks. You wrote, like, in the episode, like, you wrote a note right. saying, like, I hate you, I'm leaving, like, whatever. And that was the last note they had. And then the person's dead. Right. Uh, it really looks like you're the guilty party. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. So basically, situation. would you get rid of the note? Would you Would you tamper with the evidence? If there's, like, several things that make it look bad for you. Not just one? Yeah. I think That's that, all it takes. I think if the evidence is overwhelming to the point where they might not even look for another killer and they just assume it's you and they call it a day tampering with the evidence might actually help them find the actual killer that's a great way to like (laughs) justify it it. i'm gonna get rid of the evidence that it was me to help the cops just kind of scoot past me because i know i'm innocent right and uh you know get to the real killer to be clear we're we're aware that this is all legally wrong to do oh like tampering with the crime scene is very much not something to joke about but very we, illegal but we joke about everything here so given the fact that it is highly illegal to tamper with evidence or yep. move things around in a crime scene if you just get down to the pure moment of extreme panic and shock where i just found a dead body i look like i'm the killer what am i going to do without thinking i would probably start to do this i would probably start to try to like make things look a little bit better and then i would start to question and be like wait what am i doing i can't do this and then i would talk myself into it again <laughs> yep and then keep doing it and then walk away and feel incredibly guilty. Whether it's right or wrong, I think I would end up doing this if I were in that situation, similar to on psych. If I were in that kind of position, I'd probably end up doing something to tamper with the crime scene. I just think that's a natural reaction. I think that culturally, we all want to say like, well, that's the wrong thing to do. Like justice must prevail. But when you get down to the fact that we're all just animals trying to keep on living, I think there's a certain amount of self-preservation that kicks into play sometimes that isn't right or wrong. It's just how animals are. Like, you know, the whole flight or fight thing. Yeah. Like in that situation, that would be very much triggered. You can either run away from the problem or try to solve it. Philosophy and legalism don't really factor into that moment as much as just pure adrenaline and norepinephrine. Yeah. So I I think this is something a lot of people would do regardless of the fact that they would think that this is a wrong thing to do. But I mean, I guess it doesn't (laughs) answer the question really. I'm going to say yes. I fully agree. I I think I would, yeah, I would do it. I would start cleaning the stuff up. I would just freak out, start like removing the, 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 the biggest things that would cause right. them to look at me. And then I'd be like, oh no, I got to put it back. I'm like, oh no, put it back. I'll make it worse. Uh, all right. I'll just keep this. It'll be gone. I'm right. just, it's done. And I'll see one more thing. I'm like, just want that one last thing. That might point, like, I'm just going to take that. And then eventually you're like, I just cleaned up an entire crime scene. But yeah, I think I would end up doing the same thing. I don't think you should, I, but I think that you my would. animal instinct of don't put me in a cage, uh, I want to keep living, right. would kick in and just be like, screw it. like, And I would just go against it. So let's see what the universe has to say about this. Yeah. I mean, it kind of sounded to me like you're more against this. So I'm just like a shade more right. against it. Because I know we would both do it, but it sounded to me like you kind of ended more on the this is wrong to do. Yes. I Yeah, I, I did. Okay. Yeah, I think I would hesitate longer than you right. before doing that. Right. Well, I guess you'll represent don't tamper with evidence, and I'll represent tamper with evidence. Yeah, let's do this. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Boom. Rock smashes paper. So, scissors. Rock smashes scissors. That's true. Unless you throw it really hard, then it goes through paper. Yeah, so uh, the universe says you can tamper with evidence. As it, long as, as, you, long as you're innocent. As long as you're innocent. Yes. And you're the first one on the crime scene. 
Uh, all right, so you have the Would You Rather. Yes, I do. Let's do this. This one is pretty interesting. I actually stumbled across this on Reddit. I don't remember who posted this, but I've seen it a few different times in a few different ways. So I don't feel like I'm really stealing this from anyone. No, and Carter found this earlier, and I don't think I'm overselling it to say it's the best one we've ever seen. It'll be the biggest thing uh, we've ever done. It'll be on your minds for the next month. And it will change who you are as a person. Yes, it'll change your life and those around you. Carter, what do you got? So buckle up and put your shoes on. <laughs> so, would you rather... Man, now, see... <laughs> I know, I know you know that that buildup was not on, like actually going to pay off, but I do feel bad. <laughs> no, no, it's that was just a ridiculous buildup. Right. So, would you rather yeah. live in a world where everyone has two sets of arms or... Like live, four arms. Yes. Okay. Well, not like four arms, like more, not, not more of these. Not four arms, four arms. Right. Okay. Yes, that type of four. Gotcha. Or live in a world where everyone has two arms except for you and you have four arms. All right, so everyone has four arms except for me who has two. Or right. everyone has two arms except for me that has four. Either way, you're the freak. Oh, man. Um, so pretty much if I got to have four arms now uh, or change everyone in the world, uh, I feel like I would rather have four arms. Mm-hmm. Because I'm assuming they're the same functionality, right. like everything. Yes. Yeah. So that would that would make me very vital in some situations. I'd agree. I, I really do. I think so. But if it was everyone had four arms, then the world was molded around, and right. everything you use is molded around having four arms. I would then be at a disadvantage. I would have a handicap. You don't want that. You want to have extra arms. You don't want two arms. Like, you want four arms. Yeah. Why do I have to explain this to you? Oh, yeah. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You know this. So, yeah, I would I would choose four arms. Yeah. I, I'm right there with you. And that really? was my exact line of thinking as well. If everyone in the world has four arms, then the world would be designed to accommodate that. We're just two guys with eight arms living in a two-arm world. So we had decided that it is okay uh, to tamper the crime scene that you are implemented on as long as you are innocent. Yes. Uh, and uh, then you would choose... I would choose to have four arms. And so would I. Yeah. And we'd live in the world of two arms and just be better than everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Twice as good. So remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Ring the notification bell. If you ever have to go on vacation with your family and no one wants to take a flight to anywhere, so you guys all decide to go on a road trip and then you head out from Maryland and drive all the way out to see the Grand Canyon, but then you get a little bit too close to the edge because you think you see a jackalope run down a trail into a cave, so you start standing closer to the edge to get a better picture and accidentally fall down it and break your leg and then you're stuck at the bottom of a ravine for several weeks, just call an Uber. And um, don't buy Swedish fish. Just don't. No. And as always, I, I kaga. kaga. Yup.